Being able to control your Roblox scripts outside of Roblox is a lot easier than you guys think. Now, let's get down to a little scenario so you guys can understand this a little bit better. Imagine the server is a chef in a fancy restaurant. The chef, which is our express server, is ready to cook up some delicious data. But the chef won't start cooking until you give him the secret ingredient, which is going to be our API key. Now, Roblox is a hungry customer who wants to order a special dish. The customer, which is Roblox, sends a request to the chef with the secret ingredient. If the ingredient is correct, the chef starts cooking and sends back a delicious JSON dish. But wait, how does the customer talk to the chef? That's where the waiter, which is going to be HTTP service, comes in. The waiter takes the customer's order, the HTTP request, delivers it to the chef, and brings back the delicious JSON dish to the customer. Now let's put it all together. The customer, which is going to be Roblox, sends a request through the waiter, which the waiter is going to be the HTTP service, and then the waiter goes to the chef, which the chef is our express server. And it also gets the special ingredient that we said that was our API key. If the ingredient is correct, the chef cooks up the data and sends it back to the waiter, to the customer, and voila, the customer gets the delicious data. And that's how our servers connect to Roblox using HTTP service. If you found this scenario helpful and funny, just let me know. I'll do a lot more in the future, so let's dive right into it. Before we get started, you want to make sure that you have yourself an IDE. The IDE that we'll be using inside this video is called VS Code. You can use your own IDE, but for the video, we'll be using VS Code, and now uh, let's get right into it. First things first, we need to install Node.js and NPM. Think of Node.js as the engine of your car and NPM as the fuel. Without them, we're not going anywhere. Head over to the official Node.js website at nodejs.org and download the LTS version. LTS stands for Long Term Support, which is a fancy way of saying the stable version that won't explode. Alternatively, you can use the Node installer. It's like having a personal assistant for Node.js versions. You can install it from Node.js download page, which, is, which will be in the description. Once you have it installed, you can check if everything is working by running these commands out of your terminal. So you want to go to your terminal and you want to write these commands. You want to write node-v and after the, after you get the uh, version of node, you want to do npm-v and that this should all be displayed on the screen right now so you guys can come along with me and see if you guys are getting the correct version. And if not, go back to the download page and try to reinstall it, try to see what the problem is. And if you guys are still having any problems, be uh, just put it down in the comments below or join the Discord for more assistance and we'll be happy to help you. So what we want to do first is we want to head over to our, want to head over to our desktop and when we head over to our desktop, we want to right click on our desktop and find a new button. When we find a new button, we want to head over to folder and we want to create a new folder. And we're going to name this folder whatever we want, but we're going to name it just RBLX server. And after we're done doing that, we're going to head over to VS Code and inside of VS Code, we're going to go to file on the top left hand side of the application. We're going to go to open folder and we're going to find this folder and open it. All right, once you have everything set up, what you want to do is you want to essentially open up your terminal now. When you open up your terminal, you want to you want to make sure that you're in the right directory. So as you see here, it says that we're in our Roblox server and that is the folder that we just created as well. So we are in the correct directory. So once we're in our server, what we want to do is we want to do npm install express. And when we do that, it's going to install everything that we need to get everything started. And once we do that, we want to right click on our folder we're gonna do new file. We're gonna make we wanna make this file server.javascript. So the first thing we wanna do when we get inside a server script is we wanna set up the basic stuff that Express needs in order for it to run. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do we're gonna create a variable called conf and we're gonna write express. And then we're gonna get the um the general data that we need for um that we're gonna need for express. So we're just gonna go past this part pretty fast. You guys can just essentially just copy what I just did. All right, now that once we do that, um, just make sure the most important part about this is that you understand what the port is. The port is what's gonna help us determine what our link or what our local host is gonna be. So having a local host of 3000 doesn't really mean nothing, but it helps us indicate that when we do get our link and we wanna make sure that our port is 3000 for now, that it's the same for our Roblox server. But we'll go more in depth once we get started. And after doing that, you wanna create our API key. So we're gonna create a variable and we're gonna call it API underscore key. And then we can just name whatever we want. So we can just name it SSX for now, or you can name it whatever you want, honestly, like I said before. Then once you do that, now let's make the middleware. And if you don't understand what middleware is, it just gives us, um, it just protects our, um, our routing. 
so if there's any um inter if there's any like um backlash or like maybe the api key is wrong the middleware comes in and tells that hey there's something wrong back to us so we know that there's something wrong so in order for us to do that we're going to do app we're going to do app.use and then we're going to get the request so inside of these parameters um as you can see here we have the request handler so we're going to make this req and then we're going to have the response and then we're going to have next and then the syntax is a little bit weird since you guys are all more used to Lua, I would assume so. So this is a JavaScript if you guys are uh, completely aware. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our API key. We're going to do API key equals request dot query. And the query is just essentially like the, it's the, um, the length of the, it's the whole entire website link if that makes sense. I have a picture of right now so you guys know how it looks like. And when we do that, we're going to do uh, API underscore key. So this is going to give us the API key. So when we uh, when they try to uh, input the API key and it doesn't match our API key, what we essentially want to do is we want to do um, if our API key is not equal to our API key that we have on top, then we're going to return a response. So we're going to do response.status. We're going to turn a 401 indicating that it's an error. And then we do dot JSON. And then inside of this JSON, what we're going to do here is we're going to um, open, oh, we're going to have a parentheses, have bracket inside of it, and we're going to do error, and then we're going to have invalid key. And that will be all for everything for right now. And then when we do that, after we're done that, we're going to do next. All right, so now that we're done, do now that we're done handling the middleware. Now let's get into more of the more the more important juicy stuff for this script. So now let's define our route so we can actually return the data. So once to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do app.get, and for the first parameter, we want to essentially create the string of how our API is going to get pulled from. So essentially our endpoint. So for our endpoint, we're going to do slash API slash data, and you can do API slash name slash Roblox, it's whatever you guys want to do. But for this video, we'll be using slash data. And for the other parameters, we're going to be doing REQ for request, and we're going to be having RES for response. And then we're going to have our little arrow and have a table, and then we're going to create a, a, a variable called data. And we're going to essentially, this is what is going to be passed to the server. So inside of here, we can essentially just return the table of what we want to return back to Roblox. So inside of here, we can do something like um, messages messages and then we can have like you have past data and you can also uh, you can also pass more this is, a, this is a table so you can pass way more so for us to like control a part we can do part size or not even part size we can do size and then inside the size table we can do x is equal to is equal to, uh, to 10 we can do y is equal to 10 as well and we can do z is equal to 10 as well so when we pass, so when we pass this down to Roblox, we can essentially compress this down, and we can be able to just use these values that we passed from the API. So that's what's really important about doing this. And once we have all that, what we can do now is we can do response.json, and then return our data. And now, just for some extra tips, now let's just have like a little print statement that pops up when we start the server so we know the server is actually running. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do app.listen. So it's basically gonna just essentially listen to the server so when it starts, it's gonna, do, it's gonna uh, print to the console that something has started. Um, then we're gonna uh, essentially just have uh, the port. Then we're gonna have um, the function here. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, console.log. But if you wanna do a short, you can just write log and hit enter and that'll be a little shortcut for you guys. And we're gonna do server is listening. And then we can also have like our, our, our host, but I'm just going to do server listening and then that's it. And that's basically all for our express server. But one more important fact is for you to be able to see this in live and like right now in your browser, what you want to do now is since you guys already installed node and NPM, you can do node and then you can write the server. So whatever your, um, your JavaScript file name is, is what you're going to put after right now. So if my name was roblox.javascript and that would be that would essentially that's essentially what's going to be there for the roblox part but for our script right now it's called server.javascript so what we're going to do we're going to do server.js 
and now it says server is listening. So that means that's basically indicates to us that our server is currently on. So if we were to go to our, our, our um, browser right now and open up a new tab, and if we were to do, um, so localhost, and we have it already right here. If we had this, boom. We have an array where it says message and then it has you have past data and we have the size which is uh, an array of x y and z and it has 10 for all the values and that's just a, a prime example of how the api endpoints are working using express using express js and now let's get into the roblox part so we can get this all connected all right now we're in studio so the first crucial thing you want to do the moment you come into studio is you want to go into your game settings and you want to go all the way down to security and then when you go to security you want to go to allow http requests now this is very important to be able to essentially pull data and be able to use it from our express server so let's be able to just have that turned on right now and you can you can keep these off if you already have them on just keep them on off whatever you have to do all we need is allow http requests that's the most important part and then we're just going to save it now so now let's get into our script so go into server script service and let's add our script and inside of here just make sure that you also copy and paste the link that we just seen from our express server inside of our browser into roblox studio so, so let's create a function let's create a local function and we're going to call this local function fetch data and before you even do that let's go on top and let's create our our local variables so let's do local http request so let's get our http service and after done doing that, let's get our URL. So our URL is going to be essentially the link that we essentially use to get that table of data that had the X, Y, and Z, the part size, and our message name as well. And this is super important. Like we said before, this right here is our API key. If this API key was not the same that we had inside the script, this is not going to work at all because the API key is super important. And in the example before, if the ingredient or the special ingredient isn't correct, we cannot get the correct dish. So now that we have that, let's start working on our fetch data function. So to get started, let's just make our let's make a p call function so we know that if we get an error, we can just essentially work with the error more efficiently. So this is local success. And we're gonna do response equals p call function. Oops. And then we're gonna do return http service and then we're going to do get async and then we're going to do url then after do that what is well essentially what all this is doing right now is we're getting http service and we're, we're uh, essentially just trying to get the, we're trying to get the data from this link here that's all we're doing here that's basically all it's saying nothing too complex pretty straightforward let's keep it going so if success, so if we have no problems at all, that means, our, that means we can do HTTP service and then we can do json.decode. You're part, what, you're part wondering what decode is. json.decode essentially just breaks down, just breaks it down to a Lua table. So in order for it to, um, for us to actually be used inside of Roblox, we have to break down the JSON data. So we're gonna do JSON, uh, we're gonna use the function JSON decode, and then we're gonna put our response inside of here if it is successful, meaning that the we, we, uh, the um, API key is SSX, which is not, which is uh, not here. Let's just fix that real quick. So if our um, API key is SSX, that means we're good to go. It's gonna decode correctly, and our data is gonna be inside of this little variable right here right now. So once we do that, we can just do, uh, we can just do print data dot message. Then we can do we can just actually just print the data actually, and then we can add our else statement right here. So essentially, if we don't have our our data correct, we can just say we can just do warn fail to fetch data. API key is wrong or server is not started. Yep, and once you have all of those, now let's run the script and see what happens. So before we even run the script, a very we have to make sure that the functions first of all running right now. And if we were to run the game, we can see that we have a table, and this table also returns a size which has x, y, and z. And now that since we have these, we can control our Roblox scripts just with our server from ExpressJS. 
All right, so once we got the basic concept of how we can get this to work loud, let's implement this into our actual game and try to see if we can get this to work on a part. So instead of us just printing the data out, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna return the data now. So when we're returning the data, that's basically gonna help us uh, essentially modify the array that we get back from the server. So we're gonna return data. And then what we can do here is we can return nil if we get nothing at all. And then inside of here, we can inside of fetch data, we can make this fetch data call local uh, data equals fetch data. And then if we just were to um, do print, um, if we did uh, data dot size, we should get the X, Y, and Z that we had before. Yep, right here, we get the X, Y, and Z. So now we can use these values inside of our actual script. So what we wanna do first, we wanna to go to our workspace and we wanna just create a simple part we can use. We're gonna have a part, just keep it part, we're just gonna name a part, keep it simple. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create another variable and we're gonna call it part equals workspace dot part. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do part dot side is gonna be equal to vector three dot new. And then we're gonna do data dot x and then we're gonna do data dot y. Then we're gonna do data at z as well. And then when we run the script right now, so a correction here is um, for data, what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna call it data dot size, just so when we do data, we don't have to do dot size for either for every single one of these. So now when we press run and we go to our part, boom, our part size has increased because of our server. And if we did wanna change this, we can go back to our express server, which is what, which is what we had here. We can stop the server and we can change the X. Let's change the X to 100. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do node. We're gonna start the server again, node server.js. We're gonna go back into our Roblox game. We're gonna run the script again. And boom. Just because we changed the server, we were able to change what was inside our Roblox game. Hey, wait, boy.